In this episode of Going for Green, turning industrial and domestic glass into fine pieces of usable art in Kitangela, Nairobi. Using mobile money platforms to provide solar power to off-the-grid consumers around Kenya. One man is taking on tree planting in eastern Kenya and turning it into an economically viable practice. Learn how to make your piece of land a self-sufficient ecosystem for food production. With the growth of economies and development of infrastructure comes the increase in high-rise glass buildings and with it construction waste into the environment. For a long time, this glass lay in dump sites unused. Kitangela glass found an ingenious and creative way of using the glass waste through a skillful and precise technique. I learned how to melt glass in Holland. Uh, I discovered that there was a whole bunch of other things that you can do with it and got captivated by the magic of the medium and it sort of took off from there. We grabbed hold of whoever wanted to learn and we started learning together. We're 100% Kenyan because everybody who works here is Kenyan. The workforce is 100% local, with some of the artisans growing from simple handymen into highly skilled glassblowers. This is my seventh year, but first I came as a plumber and uh, used to attend the furnaces. I was intimidated with the glasswork and I saw it, uh, it was nice and uh, I liked it and I loved it. So I started training. Kitangela Glass pride themselves on being very environmentally conscious and do everything to ensure they use waste products through the entire process. Our products are from 100% recycled materials. They are scrap window glass and bottle glass. Our process at Kitengala Glass starts from broken window glasses. Uh, we get our raw material from town uh, that is industrial area. After bringing it, uh, it's where we sort it out according to the colors that we want. We break them, wash them. After that, that's when we feed our glass. We melt it at a temperature of 1100 degrees centigrade. After that, uh, it melts the whole night. Uh, tomorrow when we come at 8 o'clock, uh, we check the glass status. If it's okay, then we start our job. We have a water tank on the dome outside which provides pressure and that feeds into the furnace into a, basically a steam generator, pressurized steam generator. We, we've made a burner which picks up the oil and atomizes and injects it. This is how the system works at Kitangela. Above the furnace are two tanks, one with water and the other with used oil. Within the furnace are pipes coiled through. To get the furnace going, gas is used to heat the water running into the pipes. Once the water is hot enough, the high pressure steam is released at the same time as the used oil. Due to the heat and pressure, the mixture ignites and creates a hot flame. This flame now heats the pipes and turns the water into vapor. The process is now self-sustaining and the furnace burns at a thousand degrees. After the glass is okay and we find it okay to work with, that's when we start uh, by placing the, our blowing pipes at uh, the tip uh, of the door. When they get red hot, we can collect the glass from the furnace. After that is when we start our work by blowing our bubble. After making the item, maybe you, are, you want to put a decoration. There is another person collect another piece of glass. He will roll the glass on top of the color and uh, it's sold in the glass. Then that's when he reads the color, then comes back and you apply the color on top of the item. After making the base, it's when you have to change over from uh, our blowing pipe to the panty. That's where we have to cut the piece of item that you have made uh, with the uh, Wet, wet, wet file, then you just knock the other blowing pipe and it disengage. Once complete, the item is left to cool for up to 18 hours at 500 degrees centigrade. 
We are trying to make uh, it easier for the nature because our broken window glasses is trash. Also, even uh, the newspapers. So we recycle them. That, that's another thing that we do for the nature. The building industry in Kenya is putting up houses and office blocks all the time. And when you have a stock sheet of glass, the bit that's left over, it's cheaper to actually throw it away than try and store it and reuse it somewhere. Through their hard work, they have managed to achieve World Fair Trade status. We've just managed to achieve um, World Fair Trade membership. It's quite a mission to get that. There's a lot of hoops to jump through. This has been mainly through their social responsibility. We try to do as much as we can <laughs> with regard to sort of social responsibility. For example, we fence the local school, we supply um, scholarships and exam papers. The ethos at Kisingela Glass is that there is no waste in the process and everything produced is a work of art. Every failure uh, in blowing or making an item changes to another fantastic item, uh, another design. Working with glass, it, it makes somebody feel nice when you are changing nothing to something which is trash and you are making something to incredible and gorgeous thing like uh, it's like treasure. Access to electricity is still a major challenge in most areas on the continent. Where solar products are available, access and affordability tend to be a deterring factor. This is a double tragedy, as most of those in need of power are at the bottom end of the economic pyramid. A company has found the perfect balance, working off the backbone of the very prevalent mobile phone networks and mobile money to provide a working solution. The opportunity of homes that need energy, that do not have uh, grid energy, is 5 million and above. The numbers of people is there for an average of 4 to 5 people per home. So you're talking about millions of people out there that do not have access to clean energy. The options they've had are the traditional kerosene-based options. That one is expensive, two has its health problems, and three has other hazards that come along with it. Nilikuwa na taa ya, ya mkebe, nilikuwa mwezi naleta kwa mapua, kwa kifua, watoto walikuwa na kohoa saa yote, watoto walikuwa na kohoa kabisa hata kama hii kwa parasola nilikuja nikachukua mimi mwenyewe nilikuwa nimekohoa nini mwezi msima. As well as creating serious health issues with the users, the traditional kerosene lamp is also a hazardous piece of equipment. Kerosene is highly flammable and at times kids are in the process of studying burn houses and burn books. M Copper have brought to the market the M Copa Solar, which is not only a healthier, safer alternative, but has great financial advantage to the user as anyone with a mobile phone can easily purchase it. We've been able to come up with a concept where we're delivering solar energy to people in their homes, at their comfort, uh, with a deposit of 3,500 Kenya shillings and 50 shillings a day payment. Your basic product uh, comes with two lights initially, and if you are a good paymaster within 30 days, we'll give you another two, so that equals to four. It comes with a torch, a mobile phone charging unit with a radio that is powered by the system, and that's what the base unit is all about. The MCOPA Easy Pay system works off mobile money platforms. The individual who is registered on the phone network buys the product at an initial deposit of 3,500 Kenya shillings. The product is installed in the home. The buyer's phone number is then registered on the MCOPA system. Every day, the user will pay 50 Kenya shillings via their mobile phone. This is relayed to the MCOPA system and the system allows the unit to work. If a payment is missed, the MCOPA system will send a signal to shut down the unit, disabling its functions. Once a payment is done, the unit works again. The MCOPA Solar is not just lighting up the lives for people at home, it is lighting up their businesses too. Niko na tochi, tochi na tumikia, 
huko kwa barabara sitima kama kuna watu wanafungwa wanaenda wanaenda nini wanaenda nyumbani na mimi namulika watu wanakuanga wamekuja na nimulikia na endelea tu kuchoma mahindi paka saa tatu paka mahindi yangu yishe ndio nikuje to kinanisaidia sana kwa ajili ya kuchoma mahindi redio ina inanisaidia kwa ajili ya kuamsha watoto kwenda shule na kusikia matangazo na muziki iko nimeweka memory iko saa nyingine tunacheza kidogo <laughs> watoto wanafurahia The Mcopa system has helped individuals and groups be able to manage their finances from the extra bit of money they are left with at the end of the day. Tangu nipate hii nini hata sasa hii tunaenda mahali chama ya wamama. Pesa tunachukua kama umekosa kulipa siku mbili tatu hata wiki watu wa safari kwa mwana kukumbusha wanakupigia simu. Wanasema nini nini sitima yako hakuna. Eh unaweza kulipa hapo leo pesa yenye uko nayo uko na ngapi utalipa unawaambia yenye uko nayo yote yenye utatuma hata kama uko na 50 hata kama uko na 100 hata siku nyingine kama unapata 200 unawaambia nitatuma matarajio yangu itakuwa msuri kwa maana mimi naendelea kutumikia hii stima after you've paid as well and we are happy at the end of the year that you finished your credit we remortgage you can remortgage your asset and one of the key things that we are now availing is a television that is powered on the same platform and again you continue paying us 50 shillings a day after a deposit of 1600 for 2 years and you own the tv additional products are a water tank an energy saving jiko and a bicycle watoto wanataka kabisa tv kuwa na mkopa Maendeleo ni leo sasa hivi. Hakuna siku nyingine hakuna kesho ni leo. Did you know that it will take one glass bottle 1 million years to decompose in the environment? Across Africa, the forest is a resource for sustenance. to many people who rely on it as a source for fuel building materials or income this has seen vast areas of forest being cleared in kenya a company called semi arid regions environmental services is taking environmental issues and conservation to the next level to replenish forests for a greener future every down uh, every day every day people are cutting down trees for sustainable needs that they need firewood they need charcoal they need building materials the team hopes to restore forest cover back to 10% in rural areas this will be achieved through training the youth i started out targeting the schools i trained the pupils to gain the knowledge fast on how to go about the, the benefits of forest So in the every school I train the theory part and we go to the practical part. I ensure every school has a tree nursery and an environmental club. Since we started the club, we have seen so much the benefits because there were not those trees. This land was very bare and so far we have done it. There have been major challenges in this training and at SARS they recognize that they must find a solution in dealing with the lack of adequate water. One major challenge is lack of adequate water. Polymer is a product which absorbs the water retaining the moisture in the soil. The polymer will absorb the water forming crystals in the soil. During the dry spell where there is no rains and the trees need water, now the water which was retained in the soil osmosis will take place. The water will move from area of high concentration to low concentration. When planting trees, a polymer is added to the soil around the tree. When it rains, this polymer will retain a large amount of water and store it. During the dry season, water will move through osmosis from the polymer to the surrounding soil. The roots of the young tree will then absorb this water, sustaining it through the dry season. SARS have developed a biorepellent to deal with the challenge of termites which eat up tree seedlings the challenge is that these very termites are also important for the soil you need the decomposers like the termites and other active organisms in the soil the decomposers so without the termites in the shamba you have no manure 
When you apply the chemical pesticide, you kill the decomposers. When you apply the biopesticide, you just repel the termites. So the termites, you don't need to kill them. You need to protect them. Instead of waiting for termites to take, uh, to destroy all your timber, you get a brush, you brush like the way you do painting. This is natural. Using my biopesticide, people have started now planting trees in large numbers because they are surviving. They also bring value to tree farming by making products from the oils that the trees release. For example, eucalyptus is a repellent of mosquitoes. So once you extract the oil, the oil is a very good mosquito repellent. Coconut oil is antifungal and I mix it with the eucalyptus oil. It becomes a broad spectrum. Ensuring that there is a tree nursery in every school provides a source of income for the environmental clubs, which can be used on school trips to keep the students motivated and see the economic value of trees. For example, if a club will sell about 8,000 shillings, at 10 shillings, they make about 8,000 gross income. So the 8,000, I encourage the teacher to take the pupils for a tour so that you can motivate the pupils. Because they know they went out because of tree planting. They will never stop, stop with tree planting. Our club has, has meant me in our, even in our homes to plant some trees, even to organ, even I, I could request others to, to plant so that we can make our, our environment beautiful. At SARS, they are dealing with climate change by tackling carbon emissions, one tree seedling at a time. We are solving a global problem, that's the climate change. We are reducing the heat, that the, the, the climate change, that's the global warming. We are reducing the carbon emissions. In our ever-changing environment, adaptive measures are now more of a necessity not only on a community level, but domestic as well. On the Kenyan coast, a permaculture enthusiast is turning his home into a food factory and training young locals on the technique. After seeing the detrimental effects in the last decade in, in the continent, uh, we're trying to bring back biodiversity by composting, by constantly adding biomass, by mulching all our beds. These break down, we create beautiful soils, and things start growing better. Our solution to land degradation and mismanagement and all that is, is permaculture. Permaculture is the development of agricultural systems that are self-sufficient, where every crop and animal supports the other. It's, it's a great solution to combine various elements into one system. Different plant species all working together in harmony or bringing in livestock, poultry, birds, whatever you want, into the system to, to enhance it. The key to the system is water and rainfall harvesting. It rains, collects in our gutters, goes into our holding tanks, and then we, we use it. We've got a drip system. We use it through our drip irrigation to grow our salads and our veggies. And we use it for drinking water. We use it for our animals to drink as well. And yeah, it's totally clean water. It's, it's great. Over and above water harvesting, the recycling of water used within the home is intrinsic in the system. Grey water is also something we use. Kitchen sinks, showers, it all goes back into our system. It gets reused in, in banana circles and they're very okay with grey water. Grey water is water from the kitchen and shower. To create a banana circle, make a hole in the ground, plant banana tubers in a semicircle. Drain the grey water into the hole. The bananas will do very well. Depending on the agroecological zone, banana circles could have a different variety of species. Coastal species would be lemongrass, cassava, sweet potato, uh, papayas, bananas, uh, arrowroot, and sugarcane. The animals also play their part in the sustenance of this ecosystem. Our, our lifestyle works in a closed loop system, so we grow food for them. In exchange, they fertilize. They, they create fertilizer, which goes straight back into the system. So we've got, a, we've got a little wormery. We give them food scraps, and in exchange, we are able to 
make compost teas, which go directly onto the leaves and into the soil. Vermi liquid is really high in, um, in nutrients and it gives a boost to plant immunity. Rabbits also provide a lot to the system. We're currently harvesting urine. The urine is then diluted with water and fed to the fruit trees. Very, very high in nitrogen. There is a need to return our soils back to their natural healthy state. One way of doing this is through compost. Compost is, is black gold basically. Using daily garden elements such as green materials and brown materials from your system combined in the right ratios and if layered correctly they can break down up in up to 21 days. To create a small compost heap Place sticks and twigs on the ground in a square of one meter. Spread some ready manure from your livestock on top of these. Put a layer of dry leaves and grass. Once done, cover with a layer of green leaves and plant material. Add your kitchen food waste on top of this. Repeat this green and brown layering twice. Cover the entire pile with grass and with a plastic sheet. Babugani kwa sababu gani tunaifunika ni kwamba hatutaki either maji yote ingie pale ndani na tunataka ile process ifanye vizuri pale ndani once done a stick is dug into the center of the pile ile ni kama kipimo yetu ya yani tuseme ni kama thamu yenye inapima joto kwa sababu ya mara ya kwanza siku ya kwanza ukishaitengeza siku ya kwanza Siku ya pili, siku ya tatu, inataikana ikuwe moto. Sasa ikifiki kwa hiyo kiwango, basi, utakuwa uko kwa the right process. Important in permaculture is keeping the process entirely organic. Ma hile ni mespray, hile ni mix ambayo ni mchanganyiko wa pili pili, mukilifi, marobaini na tunaweza ongezea garlic hizi aina tatu ama nane za spices huwa zinatibu aina mingi za magonjwa na kwa sababu utakuwa umeukava na mulch sio rahisi kupotea watakuwa wako pale tu ni wageni wako siku zote hivyo basi wanaotengeza ule mmea wako unakuwa na nguvu this is a holistic system and the community is taking it up from a very young age. Every Friday I usually have a class. After class we usually go to the ground and there are 22 kids. The instruction I could give them to young people is that they should come in large number so that we can work together as a community and we will be able to achieve what we have, we have set, set ahead of us. How to make a compost bean from your kitchen waste? Take a used plastic bucket with a tight lid. Drill 10 holes in the bottom and 10 holes on the lid. Place dry leaves or grass at the bottom until it's halfway full. Cover this with a layer of soil. Put your kitchen waste on top of this and mix slightly. Wet it with some warm water. Cover the lid shut. Place in the shade. Keep adding kitchen waste and mixing. Let it compose for two months when full.